Greetings everybody, my name's Piet Valentine and I'm the author of two books, The Resident's Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Resident's Rise from a Dementia Unit. This is the sequel of this. Okay, so the video today is going to be about reading in a dementia unit. Now, you may well say reading, but people with dementia can't read. Now, that's what I thought some years ago when I was working regularly in a dementia unit as a physiotherapist and, you know, the typical shut down and shut off syndrome. Everyone's just like exhausted and not communicating and not interested seemingly in anything. Now, actually, that is for a number of reasons. It could be medication isn't quite right. It could be that they're depressed. It could be that they're not stimulated. It could be that they're just like exhausted or haven't had a good night's sleep. Or because they see everyone else is like that, they become like that. No stimulation. So, you know, I mean, you're not going to be alert and awake unless you have something to be alert and awake for really otherwise you'll just you know go for the default option now when i started at the unit uh, the various units i've worked at this has always been the case but with the work you know this work that's all explained in the two books of activating the intellect of the residents um i actually discovered that they could read now the the when i found this out was that I used to do these workshops and uh, as a divisional therapist and uh, all, all range of things. And I, it was actually really difficult to get the interest of the residents, I have to say, initially. And I tried all the, you know, the usual activities, nothing was working. And usual topics, nothing seemed to be working until I actually brought the whiteboard in. I won't ruin the story in the book, but I brought the whiteboard in and started putting up a few quotes of Shakespeare. Now, Shakespeare, one tends to think that you need a fairly advanced level of thinking for Shakespeare. Well, I put these quotes up on Shakespeare, to be or not to be, and the residents started to say, oh, they like that, or they don't like that, and they actually started to communicate. Little mini sentences, you know, a few words, but they were communicating. And I realized from that it was their past memory triggering into school. Everyone, everyone here in New Zealand anyway learns Shakespeare at school. Triggering, triggering into school topics and learning and thinking, they were able to recognize the quotes and were able to say a little bit about it. And they were reading it from the whiteboard. And I thought, oh, Okay, so this is interesting. Now, from there, this is all going to come back to reading in a dementia unit. From there, I started testing some of the residents as to whether they could read. Now, the easiest way that you can do at home with anyone to see if they can read is all you do is you just get a book, you know, say this is any old book, and you ask them just to read the title, okay? Now, initially, they might spell it out, T. H E, you know, remember when you're at school, well, you know, when you're tiny, about six or seven, T H E R E S, and then you get the whole word, and then you can say it. Initially, they might do that. Let them give them time to spell out the heading in the magazine or the newspaper or whichever heading you've got. Make sure it's a good day. Make sure they have glasses on that are clean so they can read. All of that. Get it all set up so that you're in the most positive position to check that they can read. They've got the glasses on, they're relaxed, they're spelling away if they need to, then often you'll find they can read the heading. Or just try their name. You know, write out their name and then they can spell their name. That's actually a good one to start with because, you know, people know their name. So write, except in very advanced state of dementia, I know, you know, everything starts fading out. Like before you die, that happens too, doesn't it? But we're talking about you know, the early mid stages of dementia. So spell out the name, and then they say the name, 
and then you know they think about it oh yeah yeah okay so if it's their name that's good they've recognized their name or if it's the headline in the newspaper that they can read good then you can start talking about it a little bit so often it's just the headlines in the newspaper and the magazines that they read but this is reading to them this definitely is reading and they can get something from that so that's why it's so important that they have access to books and magazines and newspapers in dementia units <clears throat> it's just you know well abstemious i was going to say because there's no resources but it's just stark you go into a dementia unit generally this is first level care go into a dementia unit Generally, you're lucky in most places to see one newspaper for 30 people. I mean, it is changing slowly, but like not enough. I mean, you know, everyone that was reading a newspaper before they came into the unit should be continuing their subscription when they come into the unit. So often what happens, they're, they've got the newspaper subscription, they come through the door of the dementia unit, cut, everything's cut. No newspaper subscription, no Women's Weekly subscription, no National Geographic subscription for the men. It's just all cut out, which is just because people think they can't read. I mean, of course they're not going to be able to read if they've got nothing to read. I mean, you know, the mind's a muscle, the intellect's a muscle, the arms have muscles, but they all need to be used to, to even be maintained, let alone, let alone grow and develop. Good example, quadriceps muscle, front of the leg, okay? So some sources say after, well, actually they, after 60, put it that way, they start wasting away 5% a year, which is a lot, isn't it? But it can't be that, 5%, 10 years, that's 50%, so that's too much. But anyway, a couple of percent a year, they waste away. They just get weak. So you have to keep strengthening your legs, so that you can get up and down from the chair, up and down from the toilet, all of those sorts of things. So the same with the mind and the muscle. You need to keep reading to activate your intellect and thinking. Otherwise, it will just waste away, and more so with dementia, because obviously their memory's gone or going fast, especially when they're in the unit, you know, it's got to a more advanced stage. And so, you know, they lose so much confidence because they don't know how to navigate their thinking. They haven't learned yet how to think through the intellect, which I'll, which the books are all about and which I'll go into later. And so they're really confused. So they need lots of confidence building. They need lots of practice. They need lots of resources. And the best thing you can do is bring them in. Uh, keep the subscription going for the newspaper, especially for the men that don't tend to default back to magazines and keep the newspaper going for the woman if she has been a big reader of it and the magazines which practically all New Zealand women read the women's magazines of New Zealand Women's Weekly or Australian Women's Weekly. They are a big deal. So they understand the format of the magazines and in the newspaper and so it's familiar, you know, don't bring in the Guardian or something or something they've never read before. They know the format, they know how to go about reading it and away they go. So that's why reading is so, and also in the room, just make sure that they have books, uh, you know, coffee table books, as I mentioned in the last video, cats, you know, most ladies, older ladies, seem to like cats, and most have, many have had one that they've loved and adored, so they love looking through the magazine on all the lovely cats, and actually quite a number of the ladies I've found, patients at the units, enjoy birds. Well, I don't know whether they like birds before they came into the unit or they've got to like birds once they come into the unit because that's about all they see out the window half the time. You know, the bird coming to sit on the mantelpiece and, you know, they really get to like those birds and, and, and they, they reckon that the birds recognise them and all the rest of it. Well, I don't know about that, but anyway, the same bird comes every day and they feed it a little bit of breadcrumbs, you know, because in the... In the dementia units, the windows only open that wide, don't they? Not much fresh air, by the way. And then they're locked. But at least you can put out a breadcrumb for the bird. And the bird comes back, and that's quite good company when you've got the same little bird coming to your window each morning. So, you know, that, that lady can have uh, books on birds. 
and um, what else? Oh, men, you know, they like the books on, you know, if they're a farmer, tractors, trains, um, if they're an architect, beautiful buildings, or fabulous books on all the architectural, all the architecture all over the world. I mean, there's wonderful books. I mean, library books. You want even, mind you, actually, that's a bit difficult because what actually happens is that magazines in particular, the wanderers in the unit, you know, the, the less functioning or the not as able, those dementia residents who, you know, circle the corridor and pilfer all the whatever's going on in anyone's room they consider to be their own. So magazines are often pilfered and, you know, either tea, well, they can be shredded, they can be uh, thrown into the rubbish, they can be dunked down the toilet, like anything can happen to a magazine. So if you bring magazines into your mother, do consider them to be the property of the whole unit. That's the least stressful way of going about it because if you want to just have everything continue to be pristine, magazines, jewellery, clothes, the whole works, you'll get, get so stressed out because it's just not like that. You've just got to be a bit flexible and it's good not to have too many expensive things in the room or resources because anything can happen to them. But that doesn't mean not to have resources. It's extremely important that they do have resources. So for magazines, for example, just go to a garage sale. I don't know if you have those in overseas, but garage sales are when someone's leaving their house or leaving their flat and they put everything out onto tables or out in the front of the street and people come and buy it for, you know, a few dollars. So, you know, magazines, piles of magazines from there or from friends, family who have the subscription. Old magazines are fine, just about as good as the new ones. Although the good readers do enjoy the latest on Megan and Harry and everything about that. Um, the Queen, of course, even since she's passed, they love magazines on the Queen. So all of these magazines, bring them in and then everyone has a chance in the unit. It's a very good social community service. Everyone has a chance of reading a magazine. Fabulous. For the coffee table books, bit of a... Not actually, it's not such a risk to be honest that they'll get ruined because they've got good hard covers, and the, the, I haven't seen many good quality books with a good hard cover and nice, you know, heavy pages get ripped. Not the same as the magazines at all. So you know, you're safe from that department, and you know, not. To, of course, it's you know natural to be a bit concerned about all of this sort of thing, but. It's just better to have a bit more of a liberal attitude, you know. If you bring in three good books, chances are two books will will survive well. And, you know, that's probably a good strike rate. Now, with the newspaper, uh, probably, I don't know, um, those that couldn't read it on their own, mm, out of 30 people, probably only a few, only a, less than a handful, I'd say. But for newspaper readings, when you have the whole group there, then you've got the, you know, the diversional therapist or the person at the front reading the newspaper to the group. Most people can join in that. Most people can enjoy that. Most people love that because it's uh, they're learning, they're listening, they're thinking, they're occupied, they're making friends with the person next door, they're talking in the group, you know, that their community's growing because they're thinking, learning and discussing with each other. Fantastic. The newspaper's fantastic. I mean, there's local news they'll recognise from when, you know, like in New Zealand for uh, Christchurch, you know, the earthquake, they all know about that. Then COVID, they all know about that. What's happening overseas with COVID? They love to know about that. Jacinda, although she's not in now, um, in Parliament, but, you know, all about that. So these common themes and topics, they can connect with and they love to know the latest on, on it all. So that's how the newspaper serves a range of purposes. Now, if you're a visitor coming in regularly, hopefully you are, or as often as you can, thank you, then bring in something. Bring in, you know, either the mag, whatever you know that your mother or father is interested in and will like, and that you can read to them. Yes, read to them. That's a very good idea. For example, if you're reading a magazine article to your mother, it's great, it fills in the 
silent gaps, you know, those dreaded silent gaps when no one's saying anything. It's like, it's awkward. It's not like, you know, meditation type silence. It's like, I don't know what to say. And you're not talking to a sort of silence. And it can be awkward. So you bring in your magazine and then you say to mum, you know, as long as hopefully mum's interested. She will be if you're enthusiastic. If you're enthusiastic, the other person will be interested. That's pretty much how it works most of the time. So get the magazine out, her favourite, you know, the people that you know she likes, the Queen. Open up the magazine and um, ask her, you know, if it's a good day to read out the headline and see if she can. And that's a really good start. Let her do that. And then you can read out the article and discuss one or two points. And even if she doesn't discuss the points, if you can see that she's interested in enjoying it, that's enough, isn't it? Same with your father. If he's always liked the racehorses, everyone and all men of that elderly age group like racehorses in New Zealand. My father did. And, you know, the races are a big deal here. So just cut out the newspaper articles on the races and get a photo of the big lovely horse and bring in the article and show it to dad and what form do you think the horse is in dad and you know is it doing well do you think it'll win and whatever you know what quality or standard of trotting or racing do you think that horse can manage you know just a few line answers that's fine and then if there's engagement and pick up then pick up more articles books magazines other resources on horses and races bring it in same thing leave something in their room to flick through so isn't it incredible 16 minutes you wouldn't believe it just on reading i mean we haven't even actually read anything just about the process of reading reading is so important because it increases the power of concentration and this is the most important thing fundamentally with dementia residents because when the mind's racing flat out or they have the big blank concentration's gone they have to build back their concentration power and it's a big effort and it takes time and patience on the part of the person themselves and the person helping them. But it's the most valuable thing you can do for someone to improve and increase their conversation. Their <laughs> well, actually, yeah, conversation because from concentration comes confidence and from confidence comes conversation. But start with the concentration, build the concentration up. And you'll find that, you know, you'll get so many worthwhile, wonderful things from the person that you're caring for and living with. And if you're at home with them in, this, in the lounge, rather than just sort of, put, I know, putting the person in front of TV is the easy option. But just turn it off, sit with them quietly, get out the magazine or the paper, as you would maybe read the magazine or paper to yourself anyway. But read it with them, you know, and to them. And that will be the best use of your time. You will be learning, they'll be learning. You'll, you'll feel that engagement and connection. And it's time uh, used well. Thank you.